As federal prosecutors reportedly near a decision on whether to charge Hunter Biden, there may be an even more pressing concern for the president. A new whistleblower now claims there is proof that Biden accepted bribes while he was vice president. It's pretty explosive. The New York Post cover says the clock is ticking for Joe Bryden. Senator Chuck Grassley and House Oversight Chair James Comer want to see the FBI document that they say, quote, describes an alleged criminal scheme involving then Vice President Biden and a foreign national relating to the exchange of money for policy decisions. It has been alleged that the document includes a precise description of how the alleged criminal scheme was employed as well as its purposes. The White House Counsel's Office is firing back against all of this, telling Fox this. For going on five years now, Republicans in Congress have been lobbying unfounded, unproven, politically motivated attacks against the president and his family without offering evidence for their claims or evidence of decisions influenced by anything other than U.S. interest. When it comes to President Biden's personal finances, anybody can take a look. He has offered an unprecedented level of transparency, they say, releasing a total of 25 years of tax returns to the American public. Harris, that statement from the White House goes on to say a separate statement. This wasn't from the counsel's office, but the mm -hmm. press office. Um, they say that this is like floating anonymous innuendo, to which I respond, if this document exists, it does, it's at the FBI, okay, release the document. Very simple. If it's just innuendo, yeah. show us the document. Very simple. I, I had a Democrat on my power panel yesterday say, enough with the drip, drip, drip. Just release what you got. Subpoena people. And I said, even the president? Yeah, subpoena everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because this is hurting him, Joe Biden now. He, he may have to stay in the basement in perpetuity. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's time for everybody to see what there is to see. FD 1023 is the document. Yep. That form shows just who was being interviewed by the FBI and whether or not, you know, there are some things in there that we ought to know. That's what they're asking for. And they want it in six days, I believe, from now. So just put it out there, Christopher Ray, director of the FBI. How hard is that? And by the way, Republicans are saying that it's not classified. Right. So we're gonna right. know we're gonna know what's in it eventually anyway. So let's do it in a timely fashion. Democrats are also feeling the pressure of this drip, drip, drip. Look, Biden's numbers gallop yesterday, 37% approval. Mm -hmm. They do that every morning. Like that, that's not good. That's after 20 days on the road talking about the economy. Oh, maybe that's the answer. It, so he doesn't need this on top of that, along with a new whistleblower who, by the way, we don't know the identity, but we know it's not the same as the IRS whistleblower that we just heard from last month against Biden. That's right. And Emily, this would be explosive. Um, it'd be a breakthrough moment because what we've heard so far is basically the big guy. We've heard a lot about, quote, the big guy. Um, James Gillier said the big guy who was supposed to get a 10% cut in a text message, he referred to the big guy as Joe Biden. Tony Bobolinsky also said the big guy is Joe Biden. We know there's been grand jury testimony that says the big guy is Joe Biden. But that's all enveloped in Hunter Biden's finances. This allegation is a direct link, if it turns out to be the watershed document they think it is, between Biden accepting money uh, for a political favor. If that's the case, that's a big breakthrough. That's exactly right. And reminder that this allegedly occurred during his vice presidency. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't enjoy the immunity that, for example, people like to throw around when things are discussed or alleged about the last two years. Um, and I want to point out as well how important this is for all of us as American citizens, that congressional oversight. So obviously they've subpoenaed the FBI. They say this document is in your hands. Right. They say it includes, as you said, a precise description of how exactly this criminal act occurred. All all of the details about it. And Senator Grassley said what we don't know is what, if anything, the FBI did to verify these claims or investigate further. And he went on to say the FBI's recent history of botching politically charged investigations demands close congressional oversight. And so I think for all of us who are hoping that regardless of the outcome, it's just a fair and thorough investigation, 100%. that that is what we can rely on finally with the GOP in control of Congress, that not the ends to a means will be justified, but that there will be a complete dedication to uncovering the full truth. And I can say right now, it doesn't look good for Biden. And I will say, you know, Comer and Grassley have said, Dagan, you know, they've, they've not seen the document, so none of us know what's in this document. But they do trust the credibility of the whistleblower. Mm -hmm. So this all comes down to getting the document, um, but they're relying on this, you know, really secondhand information from a third party. Right, and I know that Senator Grassley said he hopes that this document does not become classified. 
Turn and so can it, they do that? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or there could be stonewalling. It's that uh, Christopher Ray could say this document is part of an ongoing investigation. And I, I was texting with Andy McCarthy and he said, if the FBI says that they can't reveal this document, the critical thing is for Congressman Comer to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to illustrate to the American people that there is stonewalling going on mm -hmm. and that they are um, on top of this. But as Andy has said time and again, and it keeps coming up about cri potential crimes, mm -hmm. the crime is not what's important here when it comes to Joe Biden. It's corruption. Mm -hmm. You right. don't have to prove a crime. And to and maybe move the focus away from criminal activity, but just the idea all along, as Andy McCarthy has said, that when Barack Obama as president put Joe Biden in a main role as a point man for American foreign policy as to certain regimes, people around those regimes suddenly thought it was expedient to their interest to pay millions of dollars to the Biden family, to Hunter Biden and Biden family members. What did they think they were buying? That's the issue and that's the corruption. And that was a direct quote from Andy. I, I think that's brilliantly said. You know, the criminality, let's put it over here, it's about the corruption. Returning to the Hunter Biden investigation, the Washington Post saying that there might be decision making in the near future on this. Mm. Um, they've previously reported it could be a tax violation, could be a lying on a gun form, for instance. Um, but that IRS whistleblower you mentioned, his testimony pertained to the Hunter Biden investigation. Yes. And he mm -hmm. is saying the Biden administration has interfered in this process. Might I present as Exhibit A the Steele dossier as evidence that verify is very important in all of this. We must verify these facts, even the whistleblower's facts. And if there's something there, then right. it needs to be prosecuted. But how does this particularly impact the Biden administration? The more you have to focus on scandal, the less you're focusing on debt limit. <laughs> the less you're focusing on the border, the less you're focusing on all the issues our country face right now, because White Houses get consumed with protecting the boss. And that's where this White House is right now. Mm. That's right. And Republicans, while this is important to focus on, you still got to make those cases on the economy, on the border, um, and make the case to the American public ahead of a very important election next November. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.